Hey, Uncle Bard here with this week's College Cuisine. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Today we're going to make some dessert. Pumpkin pie. I'll tell you what. It was my nephew Kevin's birthday this week. And he would love to come down for pumpkin pie when they used to come visit at Thanksgiving. So I'm going to make this for Kevin. Now, I am going to shock you. I don't do my own pie crust. No way. I'm 62, almost 63 years old. In my 50-some year culinary career, as one might call it, I have made exactly three successful crusts. Three. So why bother? Why go through that old Michigas, you know, I can't do the damn crust. I buy it. Let's open this puppy up and get it rolled out. And then we'll make the filling and put it in the oven. Then, of course, later on, I will show you the finished product. Since I don't have a cameraman today, so there's no one to hold the camera while I put this in the oven. Look here. Yo, this is my regular pie plate. Now, I usually use the uh, deep dish ones you buy frozen. They're great. But I want to use this up because I bought this to make another kind of pie that I wound up not making. So there we go. Get that all nice in there. And the great way to get this is really slow so you don't crack it too much. And you let it, of course, you let it out of the fridge for a little bit. Don't, don't do the stone cold. All right, so see it like that. And then to double check, just use your fingers like that. Yeah, you can see me. There we go. Put up the air. And let's be a little fancy schmancy. Put in a little crimp. My friend Jody, she makes a killer crust. And she showed me a thousand times. Can't get it done. My mother made a great crust. Couldn't get me to make it right to be no way in hell. So, here we go, all nice and folded, voila. Now, if this were another time of year, I'd be making this from real scratch, and I'd have, been, I'd have cooked the pumpkin, shredded it, the whole work, the whole nine yards, but... I have no more pumpkins. So we're going to use can. Now, can is no sin. But this, pardon the value, well, the great value is from Walmart. Just get pumpkin meat. Do not, please, do not get the pumpkin mixes because they have spices in it and everything. So the decision is made for you. I don't get that. For one thing, Joanne does not like cinnamon. Ever. And she ain't too fond of ginger and nutmeg. So I use, my, to make my pumpkin pies, I use coconut milk. Let me tell you, that makes an interesting, tasteful pumpkin pie. You don't need to have all that, you know, cinnamon, spice, you know, all that kind of flavoring. So give it a shot. You're going to lose. Now, excuse me. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so I can find it. There we go. I'm going to put everything in here. Let's see if I get out in one shot. Nope. There we go. Now, since I'm using one cup of coconut milk and one cup of evaporated milk, you got to check the sweetness. You know, put in a little bit of sugar. I use some brown sugar. There we go. It'll let out. My grandmother would have a fit. She would have gone in there with her fingers to get all that pumpkin out. Anywho, next, the brown sugar. No, that's chicken meat. Hold on. 
<laughs> Man, if I screwed up and put in brown uh, chicken paste instead of brown sugar, I think people would know. So you want to put in a good four heaping tablespoons. At least about a third of a cup. Here we go. One. Two. Actually, you know what? That's enough. Let's get this all together first before I taste it. One goes out. My little trusty whisk. Voila. And this is, I had made pumpkin pie last week for Thanksgiving. And I saved this for another time. This is my aforementioned one cup of coconut milk and one cup of evaporated milk. The great thing about coconut milk is it stays solid when it gets cold. I mean, if you were to put this stuff in the fridge, the coconut milk, you couldn't get it out of the can. Here we go. Dead soldier. Now let's mix this all up. Now because, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to tell you. This is also how you can do vegan pumpkin pie. Except instead of half evaporated milk, which is regular milk, you use all coconut milk. And because you can't use eggs to thicken it up, cornstarch. Five tablespoons of cornstarch and doggone, it comes out pretty good and it's vegan. Because I got a, a couple of friends of mine are vegans. So here we go. Now because there's no eggs in it yet, we can taste the filling. Without getting salmonella or, you know, eh, die. A little bit more sugar. See, that's what you taste as you go along. And don't forget, when using brown sugar, brown sugar does not measure out like regular. And, woo, I almost forgot. Our good friend, Salt. Schnook. Here we go. Just about a teaspoonful of salt. Okay. Mix that up. Now we can add the egg, but it also means we can't taste it no more. Now, I was helping a friend of mine cook. We were making walking tacos. I suggested taking some of the chili out and cooking some, poaching some eggs in there for the top. So I had him break the eggs into a container and then put them into the chili. See, now there's nothing in there extraneous. No shells, in it goes. Second egg. Here we go. No shells. Look, brown eggs, homemade eggs. Look at the color of that egg. Can you see? Yeah, hold on. Look at that egg. There we go. Now, on the second egg, a lot of shells got in this thing here. And he picked them out and stuff. And then we were cooking the... Chili, he said, why don't we put the egg in the container? I said, because right now, you'd be pulling all those shells out of chili. That's why. Now, I mix this all up really good. Let's go over it. A small can of pumpkin meat. 
Coconut milk, one cup. Evaporated milk, one cup. About a half a cup of soda sugar to taste. Do it to taste. Salt, eggs. Boom. Now, if you want to go ahead and add cinnamon, knock yourself out. Ginger, nutmeg, go ahead. The coconut milk is going to make it better. And truth be told, if I knew what the hell I'd do with my cornstarch, I'd have put that in there right now too because cornstarch, like with cheesecake, stabilizes the, the curd, they call it. So this is done. Here we get our pie. There we go. And we genteely pour this into the crusts. Hola. Almost perfect. Bah. There we go. Now, because I don't have a cameraman, I can't show you putting this into the oven. So I'll try to get a picture of it in the finished product at the end of the episode. So there we have a pumpkin pie for my nephew, Kevin. Everybody eat more and enjoy. This is Uncle Bar for College Cuisine. See you next time. Ciao. I'm sorry to say that Ted and Joanne uh, lit into the pumpkin pie like a couple of hungry people. So I did not get a shot of the finished product before they ate a big chunk of pie right out of the pan. But that's what it came to look like. Anyway, enjoy. See you soon. Bye. There's not enough light.